Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know pattern the Megalodon. Megalodon was a large shark that appeared around 23 million years ago and lived on the Earth for a long time. According to current data, it might have lived with dates ranging to 15 million years ago before devoid of fossil evidence. Of course, this does not mean that it became extinct, but only the current research claims that it disappeared around 15 million years ago. In any case, it was a creature that has dominated the ocean for quite a long time in ocean history on Earth. Megalodon was enormous size, but in recent years it was confirmed to be slightly smaller than previously estimated. The earliest maximum size of this shark was more than 17 meters, but more and more complete data shows its body length was only about 14 meters. Undoubtedly, Megalodon is the most powerful marine organism. In the history of Earth, we know sharks have always been described as the perfect killing machine in the ocean. The shark family has experienced certain evolutionary twists and turns. By the Permian period, most large sharks at the time had become extinct. Then, in the first half of the Mesozoic era, the Triassic and Jurassic periods, sharks presented their existence as very small animals. It was not until the Cretaceous that many large sharks emerged, such as Cretoxerina, and this group gradually rose. After the extinction of dinosaurs and other contemporaneous marine reptiles, sharks gradually became powerful predators in the ocean throughout the Cenozoic era until Megalodon reached the pinnacle. In the history of Earth, before and after the appearance of Megalodon, no animal has been like it, as the perfect killing machine in the ocean. The restoration of Megalodon has always been controversial, which lies in two points. First, Megalodon was a shark, and we know sharks are cartilaginous animals. Their skeleton is made of cartilage, making it difficult to form fossils. Therefore, for a long time, the well-preserved specimens of Megalodon are only of teeth. The second is about its classification. These two points significantly affect its restoration. As no complete fossils were collected, we don't know what its body shape looked like. Also, we don't know its details, and have no clue which sharks it shared the same characteristics too. Megalodon only had tooth remains. People in the early years discovered the teeth of Megalodon, compared them with various modern sharks, and found that they were closest to those of great white sharks. For this reason, for a long time, it was mainstreamly assigned to the genus Carcharodon, which the great white shark belongs to, and the scientific name of the great white shark is Carcharodon carcharice. At that time, people discovered that the teeth of Megalodon were very close to those of the great white shark with a triangle shape and serrations at both sides like this, but its teeth were much larger than the great white sharks. We know that the teeth of the great white shark are only this big, but the maximum size of megalodons. Teeth can reach almost the size of a human palm. Therefore, at that time, the classification and restoration of megalodon were based on the great white shark. The earliest described name for it was Carcharodon megalodon, and megalodon is actually an abbreviation, which should be its specific name, not its generic name. So for a long time, Megalodon has always been restored with reference to the Great White Shark. According to the scale of the Great White Shark, Megalodon could reach 18 meters, and some people even say that it could be up to 20 meters long, such a gigantic body. In recent years, people have carefully restored the teeth of Megalodon and found that it came from an ancient family called the Otodontidae, a shaped tooth, sharks. This group of sharks was biologically connected with the great white shark, but far distance related. People didn't consider classifying megalodon to this family at first because early otodontids were quite small. Until more and more fossils were unearthed, people began to realize that there must be an evolutionary relationship between them and megalodon. They even thought that megalodon might symbolize the late gigantism of the otodontidae family. Later, it was discovered that long before the appearance of megalodon, some enormous otodontids had emerged. Their body sizes were similar to those of modern great white sharks, and even exceeded the latter, reaching 7 meters.
people once discovered a creature called a hynodolphus, a cetacean with a very pointed nose similar to a swordfish, or the Ahinosaurus, an ichthyosaur in the age of dinosaurs. It was a dolphin like that. Bite marks similar to Megalodon were once found on the Ahinodolphus, which were later identified as belonging to an early otodontid. A series of specimens proved that otodontids had shown a gigantic trend before the appearance of Megalodon. Later, people got deeper into understanding the evolution of Megalodon. After understanding its origin, we have more references for its restoration. There are many well-preserved fossils of Otodus. Otodus looked shorter and rounder than the great white shark. It was more like a round torpedo, not as slender as the great white shark, and without a pointed nose. Although we say that as a cartilaginous animal, Megalodon can hardly preserve its body parts as fossils, a more intact specimen was collected in Peru later which supported the previous theory. Through this more complete body fossil of Megalodon, we can confirm that this animal does belong to the family of Otodontidae as previously speculated, and its head was much shorter. Therefore, when restoring Megalodon, we based on such an image. Its head appears shorter than usual and wider when viewed from above. It is not as slender as the great white shark, but shorter and fatter. According to Otodus and their complete fossils, the largest known specimen represents a body length between 14 to 15 meters, and probably less than 15 meters, around 14 meters. This is the reference data for the current pattern the Megalodon. The more intact fossils of Megalodon show some clearer information about its bite. For example, its mouth can open very wide, up to 75 degrees. When we designed this Megalodon model, we followed this theory so that its mouth could open very wide, at least up to 75 degrees. After its mouth is opened, you can observe that its muscles are in this position. When we reconstructed it, we tried to ensure that this part conformed to the morphological characteristics of a real shark when it opened and closed its mouth. When making this model, we simulated the deformation of the animal's face when it opened its mouth, so we adopted some designs to make it look more harmonious. In addition, its head was concise. From this model, you can see its eyes situate in front of the corner of the mouth when its mouth is half opened. Then, let's talk about its gills. As a large marine animal, it has been proven to be a fast swimmer. You can imagine that a hynodolphus, a high-speed cetacean, was the prey of megalodon, which shows that its swimming speed is not slow. Hence, its body needs to consume a lot of oxygen during movement, and it was an animal good at doing aerobic exercise. When we restored the megalodon, we made seven gills for it. Modern large sharks generally have gill openings or gill slits, ranging in number from 5 to 7. When making this megalodon model, considering that it might be an animal that needed oxygen numerously, we made it more numbers, that is, 7 gills. Next, let's talk about other characteristics of its body, which were a bit like the modern great white shark. For example, its dorsal fins were triangular, the first dorsal fin was huge, and the second dorsal fin might be very small, Although there is no fossil evidence for this, according to its body size, we can speculate what organs it should possess if it wants to adapt its living state. This is also very important when we restore prehistoric animals. It had a huge triangular dorsal fin with broad pectoral fins. The muscles near the pectoral fins were very thick because to drive such a large animal, its pectoral fins must be thicker than any other animals. By the way, if you look at its lower jaw, you will find that it is much thicker than today's great white shark. This is because although the teeth of Megalodon were shaped similarly to today's great white shark at first glance, there are still some prominent differences. Its teeth were much thicker than those of great white sharks today. If you enlarge the teeth of the great white shark to the size of the Megalodon's teeth, you will find that the teeth of the great white shark are much thinner. The teeth of Megalodon were very thick. If you see the tooth fossils of Megalodon, you can tell the root of the tooth fossil is very rough, 
which means that, when it was alive, the root was attached to the bone, and the inside would connect to the bone. Long together, the rougher the surface, the stronger its friction, indicating that the teeth were durable. This shows that Megalodon might remarkably differentiate from the great white shark in the way of feeding, that is, it was better at preying on large animals with rough skin and thick flesh than the great white shark, because its teeth were more solid. It might behave similarly to the great white shark. After biting the prey, it would twist from side to side and use rows of teeth to function as a saw, cutting the animal's flesh off its body. But Megalodon has thicker and stronger teeth, so it may not lose many teeth when attacking its prey like the great white shark. Great white shark still mainly attack small animals, and Megalodon may be better at preying on larger animals. From the thickness of the teeth of Megalodon, we can infer that its lower jaw may look thicker than that of the great white shark. So when we restored the lower jaw of Megalodon, we made it into a very thick triangle. This also corresponds to a certain extent with the fossils discovered later. Besides, Megalodon had a typical crescent-shaped tail, and the upper lobe probably was longer. After all, it was a huge animal. Although for itself, the swim speed was fast, compared to other really high-speed animals, there might still be some hindrance. This might be the case for its tail, but there is currently no evidence. To propel such an enormous animal, its tail must be robust. Based on the tail of the great white shark, we reconstructed the two ends of its tail to be thicker and more robust, and made its tail flat at the sides and full of muscles, no matter viewed from the top or the rear. Good, the above concludes our introduction to pattern the megalodon. Thank you all.